Cyberpunk 2077 received patch 1.5, and there are a lot of updates. So many. I'm going to say hit that sub button, hit that bell to know when my videos go live if you like them, and then play the intro so we can get right into it. Thanks for watching everybody. So the Cyberpunk patch 1.5 came out today and there is a huge, huge uh, list of patch updates. I've highlighted a few of the more important items that I wanted to talk to you about, but largely it seems like people are really, really happy about this. So patch 1.5 is basically the next gen version of the game. It's enhancements on PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X, and a few on the Xbox Series S, even though that is running at 30 frames. I'll get into that in just a second. It's also coming to PC Stadia, but the most important one was the consoles. The consoles needed the most TLC, if we're being truly honest here. So um, taking a look at the uh, platform overviews, uh, basically to Xbox Series X and PS5, they're both getting new weapons, additional apartments, uh, a hairdressing mirror mini. You can change your, your hair and your look on your character. They're getting a rebalance of gameplay, economy, and loot systems. I actually just logged on, and you have to respec your whole character. Uh, there's a, All your perks are gone, so you have to go through and sort of redo your character, and things are just a little bit different. Uh, there's also ray trace local shadows, which means objects will reflect shadows onto themselves is reflect the right word anyway cast shadows on themselves uh, there are also various visual quality improvements spatial headphone audio improved crowd reactions and i i just you know shot it into a crowd and they all went crazy so that is good and yes there are dual sense controller features like haptic feedback uh the game's updated automatically on all platforms if you have the ps4 version installed on ps5 and wish to play the next gen version you're gonna to have to download it manually from your logo, from your console. So uh, there are the next gen exclusives like I talked about, the ray trace local shadows. Uh, there's native achievement support on next gen consoles. I don't know what that means, but my GOG games uh, achievements were bugged. So I'm stuck at 86% achievement completion. Uh, there is a performance mode, which allows you to do 60 FPS with dynamic 4K scaling. But uh, there are options to, I believe you can push it higher than that. No, 4K60, that is good. So definitely check out performance mode. And ray tracing. So if you want to do 30 FPS with 4K, um, you can do that with ray tracing mode that is available on both platforms. And here's the note about the Series S, basically. Uh, sorry, I didn't realize I was super zoomed up. Uh, the Series S version has no graphics mode selections and is by default presented at 30 FPS in 1440p with dynamic resolution scaling. Uh, the note on the haptic feedback on the controllers, it's customized based on in-game activity. The controller's built-in speaker is used for hollow calls, text messages, and everything that happens in B's head. I hope you can turn that off. I do not like using the PlayStation 5 controller. Now, on that additional content, so you always had the one apartment. Now, there are several other apartments that you can purchase. There's one on Northside. There's one in Japantown. There's one in the Glen. There's one in Corporal Plaza for different uh, prices. And if you did the, the painting glitch, which basically gave you infinite money, you're going to be able to get those right away. Um, you can rent them with a one-time fee uh, when encountered in Night City or throughout the Easy Estates website and then access through the computer in V's Mega Building H10 apartment. They become available after completing the Playing for Time quest. It's possible to rent all apartments at the same time. All apartments share the same stash. So if you ever just need to dump a bunch of things into one location, you can just throw it all in your closest apartment now if you buy all of them. Um, you can also customize the apartment. Now, this is interesting. You're able to... Um, you know, just make things a little bit different looking in your apartment. Apparently that is uh, 10,000 eddies. And then you can do things in your apartment now. You can uh, take a shower, which reply applies the refresh status. Uh, refresh allows you to regenerate health during combat. Health regenerates on its own up to 60% of the maximum threshold. If you possess the regeneration perk that increases in combat, health regen rate by 20% and your health regen threshold by 20%. If you go to sleep, uh, regenerates health and applies the rested status for one hour, 
Your rest of the game is a 20% skill XP. So if you're looking for a skill buff, you know, go take your nap. <laughs> uh, brew coffee, you get the energize status for one hour, and energize is 25% uh, max stamina and 30% stamina regen. Appearance customization, you can basically go in and change your look as many times as you want in the mirror in any of your apartments or safe house. It's free. Do it as much as you want. And yeah. And Wilson has some new interesting stuff. He has two new weapons. He has the Dara Polytechnic Umbra, a power assault rifle. He has Budget Arms Guillotine, Guillotine which is a power submachine gun. Uh, there's four new scopes. Uh, so there's a long scope, a sniper scope, a short scope, and uh, another short scope. And new weapon attachments. So there's like uh, muzzle brakes for handguns. Uh, there's for a bunch of different stuff, basically. And you can do new poses in photo mode. So largely, everything we've gone over this far, it's just the, the new stuff that has been added. Now, going on from here... They're going to talk about just general quality of life improvements to the game beyond the um, what some might call DLC items for Cyberpunk 2077. So these are things that players asked for. So we'll go over them really quick. Uh, combat AI. Um, there's better NPC melee and ranged combat AI and reactions to you instead of just being like really dumb. There's multiple improvements to dismemberment triggers, enemies are better at blocking and evading Kresnikov attacks. The heavier the weapon, the easier it is to hit. The opposite is true for evading. Uh, there's more diversification of melee and ranged combat behaviors for different factions, reckless, aggressive, balanced, defensive, and cautious. Followers will help you out a little bit more, and there's more fixes and balances to Netrunner combat. I believe the Netrunner class was one where you could just basically fry everybody in the proximity. There are a few really broken builds in Cyberpunk. So I had one where basically I would just run up to people and cut off their heads with a katana. I was invincible, full armor. That was that was my favorite one to use. There's also like hacking ones where you could just cause basically a virus to go throughout the whole area and you would just poison everybody and also be fairly invulnerable because you had buffed yourself so much. Uh, some of those, some of those broken builds were, uh, were fun. Um, so the crowd improvements, there is aggressive crowd behavior. Certain NPC archetypes can and will enter combat with the player when provoked by aiming, shooting, or firing. So they actually react when you do things to them. Uh, the time skip affects the state of NPCs. So they'll do different things. And, just generally speaking, you know, going on my one rampage before I recorded this video, the crowd reacts better, so that's good. That's just crowd stuff. Then there's the drive model, uh, whole gas and brake for burnout mode. Um, the old system allowed rotating on the spot. Now try modulating the inputs to see what you can do. You can do brake stands, donuts, drifts, or heat up the tires, do drag race style launch with a hip grip boost. So like more just driving things there's a new braking system there's engine simulations are improved with a clutch simulation has been added a uh, gearbox simulation motorcycles are improved um there's tune improvements to various cars uh and there's adjustments to the first person perspective to all vehicles that need it uh vehicle traffic there's visual improvements to traffic movement turning and suspension Panic reaction to danger. Traffic now has the ability to drive away in a panic as opposed to just sitting there. Uh, there's reaction to fender benders. Vehicles now have a wider range of reactions to being bumped into and will recover and return to traffic more smoothly. Gameplay wise. So right away when you boot up the game, Cyberpunk's going to basically tell you, hey, that old build you have, we nuked everything. Everything has been reset to zero. They they go over this immediately. So I imagine we're going to read about some of that in here because we'll, like my build was totally broken. <laughs> uh, so hopefully I can get something comparable to that because it was a lot of fun killing people with a katana. But I have to imagine it's going to make those those more difficult endings a lot harder to get to. So anyway. There's various changes related to the economy, increased rewards from jobs and open world activities, decreased prices for vehicles and cyberware. Thank goodness. It was like a ridiculous amount of money to buy all the cars. Uh, there's rebalance that improves functionality on clothing mods. So clothing mods are all reset. Uh, they adjusted the amount of modification slots available on clothing items, categorized the mods to fit 
only specific clothing items. As a result, all equip mods were moved back to your inventory. Go to the inventory screen to re-equip them in accordance with the new rules. In easy game difficulty, it is now moderately, wait, the easy game difficulty is now moderately more challenging? <laughs> okay. Uh, introduce two new stat replacing evasion, mitigation chance and mitigation strength. Mitigation chance determines how often the player has a chance to reduce incoming damage. Mitigation strength determines the percentage which damage is reduced. Components that used to increase evasion now affect mitigation. Uh, they rebalance damage over time effects. So those poison builds that I was talking about have been adjusted. Uh, generally reducing primary damage effects such as burning, bleeding, and poison. Reduced chance to disrupt trajectory of smart bullets by tiger claws, glowing tattoos ability. And added a quieter way to escape the NCPD when the heat is on instead of fleeing a certain distance. You would just drive and... That would be it. Uh, you can also hide within the search area, but it will take longer for them to stop looking. Oh my goodness, we're just to the cyberware. So you can sell unwanted cyberware at the Ripper Dock. There's a cooldown duration properly described for things like the blood pump. It's possible to interrupt the revealing position hack by damaging the net runner or having some immunity from uh, self ice cyberware. Uh, the Berserk is different, Trank rounds are different. So tranquilizer rounds and the projectile launch system no longer affect non-human NPCs. Basically, the, the arm launcher, I, if I'm remembering correctly, would just kill everything and then you cut off their head. So it, it would knock them out and you just cut their heads off and it was huge XP. The, reduce the ricochet number of legendary ballistic compensator to one, but grants 50%. Uh, trajectory generator, Kuroshi optics mod has been changed to threat analysis and now grants a 2% mitigation chance. Increased duration of optical camo cyberware. Oh, for V, that's cool. So it's a, a higher rarity level. And stuff about opto cam camo and fixed an issue where it wasn't possible to equip some cyberware mods simultaneously. Cool. So that's that's going to mean some new builds. I'm reacting to a lot of this. I didn't go through and read every patch note. So I'm reacting to it a little bit as I read it. I'm already 12 minutes in. So, I mean... I'll just keep going because I assume you're watching this video for the past notes, but we are going to talk about reactions to all this work that they've done. Uh, combat, optimizations, the combat AI, numerous fixes and improvements were made to reduce interruptions and smoothen NPC animations in combat, including attack, death, weapon stuff. Enemies will now correctly reposition to be more tactically advantageous positions, so higher positions and, you know, just go behind cover and things like that. Uh, your followers are going to shoot better. <laughs> Uh, reduced explosion damage dealt to the player because explosions would just nuke you, basically. Fixed cases where NPCs from the same group or faction didn't join combat when they witnessed their comrades fighting. Fixed an issue where NPCs didn't display a proper hit reaction when hit with a grenade upon entering combat. Enemy shotgunners will now attempt to keep a closer distance to the player during combat. So more of that like moment-to-moment uh, -moment action that they were going for. Enemies equipped with combat stims will use them when their health is below 30%. Increased visual complexity of enemy combat behavior on low frame rate mode. Fixed an issue when combat mode was triggered while roaming. Fixed an issue where the player could be knocked down by a hammer attack despite the weapon not reaching them. Significantly sped up switching between melee and ranged weapons for NPCs that can use both. Quick hacking. It is no longer possible to apply the cyber psychosis quick hack on cyber psychos. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, fixed an issue where deactivating a camera with a quick hack wouldn't interrupt enemy quick hack upload when the camera in question was used as a connection prox proxy. That's interesting. That had to be hard to code. Um, fixed cases where a hacked status effect could remain on V permanently. Yeah, I had that for a while. That sucked. Uh, fixed an issue where, in some cases, the whistle quick hack didn't cause NBCs to approach V's positions. Items and devices. It is now possible to turn devices on and off while carrying a dead body or anybody fixed an issue where elevator door animations did sometimes not display properly causing the player to see beyond world boundaries bonus items found okay bonus items found in stash two dlc jackets plus four registration reward items have new functionality From now on these items will increase their rarity after performing a certain amount of upgrades cool added a base crafting spec for each item rare quality the player's list of available crafting specs on existing saves will be properly updated to accommodate change. Okay, NPCs lowered the health of opponents in 
beat on the brat. That was the, the boxing one, except for the twins. They can now block and evade attacks, so their difficulty is based more on skill. Yeah, that was a that was a tough mission. Woodman now prefers using the same Ajax rifle that he drops his loot. He was also uh, demoted from a boss to a standard enemy. Fixed NPC behavior during Sasquatch, Oda, Atom Smasher, Royce, and beat on the brat boss fights. Fixed NPC behavior. Well, I mean, what did they do to Adam Smasher? That I'm curious about. Fixed an issue where enemy NPCs couldn't break V's guard in melee fights. Oh, okay. Fixed clipping in V and NPCs aerial takedowns. That's fine. Spin and kick melee attacks are now allowed only on fast agile enemy archetypes. Cold blood experience will no longer be awarded when dispatching enemies. This was part of my build, so I'm curious. While having no cold blood effect active. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's like a XP thing. Fix clipping when grappling. I don't care about clipping that much. I care about the functionality of the game. Enemy shotgunners now deal more damage. Enemies are less likely to attack V while V is performing a finisher. So you get your cool finisher attack. And they, they said something about finishers. Increased damage dealt by snipers. Snipers will be able to shoot when backing away from their target. I'm going to skip through this. Uh, they fixed a bunch of issues like instances of NPCs T posing and added 15% health debuff for enemies that have the Koreshnikov ability to compensate. Yeah. Perks. So your perks are reset. Rebounds various perks and move some of them in the skill tree. As a result, all of your perk points that were spent have been reset. So you got to go reassign them all. Uh, they redesigned the following perks, blood swell, human shield, epimorphosis. I said that wrong. Cold blood was a key one to a lot of builds. Coldest blood was also, and so was cutthroat. So that's going to be interesting. Added new perks, replacing some older ones. Stronger together, uh, changed to Tenacious V. Unbreakable. Oh, that was one of my builds. That's basically made you invisible. Uh, changed to Easy Out. While cold blood is active, increases ranged weapon damage by 10%. Uh, okay. Uh, commando, you cannot be detected under water. Change to looking sharp headshots with throwing knives. You can actually throw knives now. Apply blinding to the target. I think that's the new thing, the, the throwing knife thing. Silent finisher, change to juggler. When you defeat an enemy or land a crit with throwing knife, you will regain all knives currently on cooldown. Maybe there was a knife thing. I don't remember. Um, lightning bolt increases crit chance with tech weapons. Change to draw the line. Preview bullets ricochet trajectory. Ooh, that's cool. So you could see where they were going to go. That's that's much, much better. If you had a, a knife build, refresh my memory if if you could do this stuff in the past. I, I don't remember. I messed around with the knife build, but I don't remember. So they changed all that stuff. They changed a few of the other skills. V can now vault, climb, jump, sprint through glass that has been fractured. <laughs> Thank God. Uh, fixed an issue. You would have to like shoot out the whole window and they were really annoying to do. Fixed an issue where disposing a body in a crate could move V into walls or out of bounds. Some vehicle changes, weapon changes, throwing knives. Knives are not lost after each throw, but automatically return to V's hands after a set cooldown. That's great. Oh my goodness. And then, so like, there's all this stuff, right? There's all these adjustments to quests. There's open world stuff. Uh, crowds and communities of Night City are now more diverse during the day. I'll just link to this in the comic books. I'll be reading it for another 10 minutes, right? Let's get to the reaction. So largely, uh, my reaction was, I've played Cyberpunk just on PC for 180 hours. I unlocked every ending. I got all the achievements that weren't broken. While I'm excited about this new update, there's not really anything in the in the game for me to go do. I've done everything the game has to offer. All the gigs, all the random stuff that happens on the street. I was sort of hoping there would be more things to do. But I am very glad that a lot of console players are finally getting to experience the game that I got to play. Because I really liked Cyberpunk 2077. I always have, but I played it on PC. The console version was just not where it needed to be. And this is only next gen. The, the base consoles are probably still pretty rough. Um, as a note, if you want to try cyberpunk before buying it, you can actually just do it for free. You can download cyberpunk 2077 free trial on PlayStation five and Xbox series X and S for the next 30 days, starting right now. So if you want to try it out, you can play for five hours and then make your decision if you want to buy it. And it's half off right now. I know that's for Xbox. I'm not sure on PlayStation, but somebody reminded me about that today. Uh, 
Here's a character or a player who said Cyberpunk's next gen version is very good. I'm on PS5. Um, it's the most stable it's ever been. Lots of new small features added, not mentioned on stream. NPCs and crowds are overhauled. Cutscenes play out like they're supposed to, and items aren't floating. Also, lots of new uh, poses, and then she showed her character posing. PlayStation, notoriously known as the, the brand that basically removes Cyberpunk from their store, advertising that it is available on the store with PS5 features and updates there. John Linneman of Digital Foundry said, so I tested Cyberpunk's new patch on console briefly. It's definitely a big improvement in this case. I recommend 60 FPS. Reason, input lag. It feels heavy in ray trace mode. In comparison, Force Horizon 5 and Horizon the Forbidden West both feel, I think it's just Horizon Forbidden West, anyway, both feel very responsive in their respective 30 FPS mode. I haven't pixel counted everything, but res looks stable and much higher than pre-patch. So a lot of improvements. I can say it now feels like it's polished. So positive things. And then a, a few breakdowns from Benji there. And then uh, Mike Ibarra echoing what a lot of people are thinking. I think it's time to fire up Cyberpunk. Bought it, but never really had time to dive into it. Cyberpunk, Elden Ring, WoW 9.2. Um, crazy, busy gaming month ahead. And I think that was the last one that I had. So to summarize, Cyberpunk got this massive update, and I, I apologize for not finishing out the patch notes. It's just there's so many changes and improvements that I think people are like, okay, you know what? You put a lot of work into this patch. We're ready to give you a shot. We're ready to see if the game is stable and everything like that. It is, however, day one. So um, I'm just really cautious about Cyberpunk because of what they pulled. I think they've won over crowd sentiment finally after all this time if you are not one of those people let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below is it enough to win you over are you just like no i'm done like it had its chance it didn't work for me uh and if you're one of the other people who are like you know what i'm finally ready to go in there's two days for horizon forbidden west comes out i'm gonna play some cyberpunk so i want to hear from you also uh, thank you so much for watching my video. I'm just glad people get to play a version that's closer to the version that I played and liked. So thank you so much for watching. If you like my videos, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell to know when my videos go live. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to become a member, memberships are turned on. Thank you so much to all of the members who have joined. If you want to join, click that join button right down there. I do appreciate everybody who supports the channel. Thank you. I'm going to get out of here. That video was longer than I meant for it to be. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.